Look up in the sky and tell me what you see. Space is true definition of the unknown. For many years scientists have been using telescopes and other innovative technology to focus on what's in the beyond. Let's take a look at things happening this year. Scientists and space fans always look forward to what the year offers, every year. They have not been disappointed as space always serves up exciting and sometimes scary events. 2022 will not be different because it is packed with upcoming space events that will frighten even the most jaded space aficionados. What should you expect from the space calendar for and how do these events affect you? Join us as we explore the most frightening space events coming in 2022 has got off to a good start with the successful launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. We are just several months away from getting the first stunning pictures from the new and powerful space telescope. However, the excitement of the new observation station is not enough to overshadow the space event that the universe has lined up for the space community. We'll go over these insane events one after the other and be sure to update your calendars so you don't miss them. This year we have promised a series of eclipses. While eclipses are not new, they are still rare enough to generate lots of interest in the media when they are about to happen. Also, not all eclipses are the same because some are rarer and more fascinating than others, which up to seven eclipses of the sun and moon can occur in one year. But the last time that happened was in 1982, and the fewest possible is four. This year we get the minimum that is four, which is why they are extra special. The first one will not occur until April 30th. We are getting two lunar and two solar eclipses. If you have been looking forward to full solar eclipses, you're out of luck because the two will be partial. What causes eclipses? However, a solar eclipse, such as the one observed from coast to coast across the US in August 2017, occurs only at new moons when the lunar disk passes directly between the sun and US and consequently, the moon's shadow falls somewhere on Earth's surface. However, a lunar eclipse occurs during the full moon when the moon passes through Earth's shadow. These alignments don't happen at every new and full moon because the lunar orbit is tipped about 5 degrees to Earth's orbital plane, and it is only occasionally that the sun, Earth, and moon line up exactly enough for an eclipse to occur. Well, the technical name for that is Suzuki. Have fun pronouncing that. Talking about lunar eclipses, there are three possible types total, partial, and penumbral. The type depends on how deeply the full moon plunges into or near the umbra, our planet's dark central shadow. If the moon goes all the way in, we end up with a total lunar eclipse, which is preceded and followed by partial phases. If the moon ventures just partly into the umbra, only the partial phases occur. Your sight some of the moon in nearly full sunlight, and some of it steeped in deep, red-tinged umbrella shadow. And if its disk passes just outside the umbrella, the moon still encounters the weak penumbral shadow cast by Earth. If you are sharp-eyed enough, you will observe that one side of the full moon's disk looks a little dusky. All four of 2020's lunar eclipses with a penumbral cut for a solar eclipse, the moon has to cross directly in front of the sun as seen from Earth. Whether in nullar or total, these solar eclipses can only occur within a two-week-long interval when the moon crosses the ecliptic during one of its two nodal crossings. Each year, however, the geometric window for partial solar eclipses is wider, roughly five weeks long. If the moon covers the sun entirely, the eclipse is considered total. Occasionally, the moon passes directly in front of the sun, but doesn't completely cover it. When that occurs, it's usually because the moon is farther from Earth than its average distance. This geometric circumstance is called an annular eclipse because you can see a ring or a new lose of sunlight surrounding the lunar disk. Annular eclipses of the sun occur about as often as the total. Once the solar eclipse coming up on the last day of April is partial, however, it won't be seen by a great many people. The greatest eclipse, with just over half the area of the sun's discovered, is viewable at universal time from a point in the Southern Ocean, roughly halfway between South America's Tierra del Fuego and the Antarctic Peninsula. That said, the timing and geometry are favorable for South Americans because everyone in Chile and Argentina, including some parts of Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay, and Uruguay, will be treated to a partial cover-up from late afternoon until sunset. The next eclipse for 2022 comes up on May 16th, and it is one of the total lunar flagra the Sun, Moon, and Earth will again line up to create this one. 
It will be the first time that everyone in the contiguous US will have a chance to see a totally eclipsed moon. Since January, the eclipse will be sighted throughout Europe and Africa in the hours before dawn. But for observers across North and South America, most of the action will take place late on the evening of Sunday, May 15th. The third eclipse of the year comes on October 25th, and the solar system will serve as another partial solar eclipse. This one will show up over a wide swathe of the Eastern Hemisphere stretching from Iceland to Western India. However, if you are in Europe, the Middle East, West Asia, and Northeast Africa, you will have the front row seat. The eclipse events of 2022 will round off with a November 8th total lunar eclipse. As with May's event, this eclipse will be seen across the contiguous US. This eclipse offers two rare treats. First, it occurs during the annual display of Taurid meteors. The second trait involves the planet Uranus, which will appear just a couple of degrees to the moon's east during the eclipse. Coincidentally, this distant planet reaches opposition on November 8th, and so will be at its brightest. If you have a pair of binoculars, you should spot the planet easily. 2022, however, is not going to be all about eclipses. It is a year we will see a number of oppositions. In case you wonder what an opposition is in space, it means a planet is opposite the sun. So for example, the planets with orbits inside Earth orbit Mercury and Venus can't be at opposition. But the planets orbiting outside Earth's orbit Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune all can. Once each year we pass between them and the Sun in our smaller faster orbit. If the Sun is setting in the west and Jupiter is rising in the east, Jupiter is at opposition. Earth is passing between the Sun and Jupiter, which will take all night to cross our sky. Oppositions are special because that is the time the planet is easiest to observe, and this is because it's generally closest to Earth and visible throughout the night. Also, since the Sun and outer planet are directly opposite each other in Earth's sky, we see that far-off planets fully lit, daytime side, fully lit planets appear brighter torture than ones not completely lit. Now when you come to think about it, the Moon can also be in opposition during the Moon's full phase, it's directly opposite the Sun in the sky, fully illuminated and at its brightest. For that orbit, 2022 is packed with oppositions and astronomers will have a field day with them. However, all of them are in the second half of the year, so if you plan to observe them, you should mark your calendar so you don't forget the first one comes up on August 1st to 2nd, and it will involve the planet Saturn. However, we will have a second leg of the opposition on August 14th. The second opposition of 2022 involves Jupiter, and we will see the first leg in the same August on the 19th. The return leg occurs the following month on September 26th. That's not all, because September will usher in Neptune oppositions. The first one taking place on September 14th, or the second one comes up two days later in October. Prepare to see Mars in opposition on 13th, and prepare for the second one on December 8th. In fact, these are the best times for astronauts going to Mars to take off from the Earth. Take note, Elon Musk. Actually, it is the same for all other planet oppositions. Uranus will close the opposition show for the year with a first appearance on November 4th to the 5th, with a second one coming up on November 9th. Other space attractions coming up in 2022 include the alignment of planets in the second half of June. Sky watchers will be treated to a beautiful alignment of the planet in the same order as they are from the Sun in our solar system Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. They will be visible during the twilight hours spanning in the eastern and southeastern sky in the latter half of June. If you are a fan of meteor showers, 2022 will treat you to the Geminid shower in the last month. Meteor showers arise when the Earth passes through streams of debris left behind in the wake of comets and asteroids. Over time, the pieces of grid-like debris in these streams distribute themselves along the length of the parent object's orbit around the solar system. On certain days of the year, the Earth's orbit passes through particularly dense streams associated with comets or asteroids which have vented vast amounts of solid material to space and this gives rise to an annual meteor shower. Tell us your thoughts about the terrifying space events happening right now. We want to know how you feel about all the new and upcoming changes. Make sure to like and subscribe for more awesome videos and content from Technology Yak.